like weigh 120 pounds of me. Turn it out, turn it Cool, man. Can you just tell me your uh, your age, your belt, and where do you train? So I am 28 years old. I am a purple belt under Professor Daniel Cobb. I train out of Don't Survive Thrive Academy in Winnipeg, affiliated with Hanzo Gracie Owama. Okay, cool, man. And uh, how long have you been training for? I've been training since August of 2013. It's about seven years, six, seven years. Okay, so that doesn't seem like too long, but in a place like Winnipeg, I'm guessing the growth has actually been quite quite big so far. How's it been since you started to where we are now? Man, the scene in Winnipeg is growing constantly. Um, so there's a lot more people doing it, and we have this biannual tournament. It's called the Manitoba Open. Um, it's twice a year, and every year the... The number of competitors just keep growing and growing and growing. I believe from last time we surpassed, like, I'm not sure a certain number, but I think with kids and adults, we went past, say, I think it was past 500 competitors total. That's and that's awesome. only from the Man from Manitoba. Some people drive in from Saskatchewan, but mostly from Winnipeg. Cool, man. Yeah, and I saw Next Gen was going to be doing a tournament out there, too. So, I mean... There must be a, like a decent amount of people, right? Oh yeah, there's there's a couple of gyms popping up, and then um, yeah, more more and more people have access to jujitsu, so a lot more practitioners. Yeah. So where do you guys usually have to go to get tournaments? Like, are you going to the states a lot or what? Um, so when it comes to tournaments, there's usually say a couple people, maybe another person and I. We drive to the states. Um, the furthest one we've dro we've um, driven to is Chicago for like IBJJF Chicago Opens. I've driven to Fargo, went to um, Minneapolis, Toronto, um, all around like the states and um, usually Toronto for tournaments in Canada and um, Saskatchewan for closer tournaments. Right on, man. Yeah, well, you, I think you guys, like your whole team surprised a lot of us out in Toronto that day at Grappling Industries. Pretty sick, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. Um, just, uh, just wondering, like, why why did you start training? Like, what got you into it? Well, um, I started jujitsu in two thousand thirteen, but before that, I did a little a little bit of MMA. Um, I was looking into being maybe the next the next kid Yamamoto or like you know <laughs> rest in peace. Um, I wanted to get I wanted to get into MMA. Um, so, but then I, when I was doing it, I did it for a year and a half. We only did one day of um, grappling which is Thursdays and then I went into a Manitoba Open thinking I would kill it you know because we you know you know no gi I only did no gi but it was yeah, only once yeah. a week and then right in there and then I just got my butt whooped and I was just yeah I gotta learn this so um, it was it was a hard decision because you know loyalty is a big thing for me mm -hmm. so but then I had to make the change and um, yeah I jumped into where we were uh, formerly known as Gracie Umaita Winnipeg, so I joined the, the 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 gym, the team, and then from there I just stayed stayed ever ever since. Yeah, and like, what type of uh, what type of goals do you have for yourself? My main goal is down the road is to have either my own academy or basically live off of um live off of jujitsu. Basically, um, I'm one of those guys that uh, just whatever job I may get like um outside, I revolve my schedule around jujitsu. So, you know, um, I never went to school like my right um, in 2006 when I went to Pan Ams and I lost. I was just like, OK, like this is it. Like I want to keep doing it. I want to keep training and want to end up, you know, living off of Jiu Jitsu. That's the main goal. If I win any major tournaments, cool. That's nice. But the main goal is always down the road. Just have my own academy or live off of Jiu Jitsu. That's awesome. Man. I think that's the, uh, the goal for most of us here. And uh, next question, which hopefully can segue into the breakdowns. Can you uh, tell me maybe a couple people that you uh, looked up to, some influences that got you uh, into the sport? All right, so um, a lot of like big influence to me, non-Canadian, would be like the the Mendes brothers, JT Torres, 
um, Marcelo Garcia, and then the, in the in Canada, um, there's Eric Fan, mm-hmm. and there's Darson Hemmings. So <laughs> yeah. those two guys, I've I've looked up to since I was blue belt, and they were probably I think Eric was purple belt when I first found out about him, and then Darson was brown belt, and then I found out about Darson. I was I followed him, even watch. Um, some of his videos leading up to that Karina match, like he, for his ABCC match back yeah. in China. So I was just like, okay. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a guy that's been around here forever, and kind of everybody knows who he is. And uh, yeah, they know he's really good. So again, like another reason why we kind of took note about who you are. You're in there, and uh, yeah, as we're gonna see here, I, I feel like you had him in trouble for a second there, but uh, I mean, he's he's just he's so experienced, man. It's uh, it's tough. But uh, here, let's uh, let's get that started. So, lining up, you know who he is. What are you thinking at this point? At this point, I was just thinking, oh, it's Darson. He's like, he's a a bottom guy. He likes to play guard. I I, I didn't doubt that he was gonna pull guard. I know I'm pretty sure he has some some str- some tricks up of his sleeve. You know, at this moment, I didn't feel like he was a he was gonna stand up and wrestle. Okay, here, let's keep going here. So he pulls Del Riva, kind of probably what you're expecting. Yeah. What kind of gave you the green light there to jump on that toehold? Man, to be honest, um, this match was like the this was the match after my win because it's round robin format. So I had four matches total in that black brown brown belt black belt bracket. Mm-hmm. I lost my first two, won my third, and then Darson the last. Um, my third match I won by leg lock. So. When I, I was so starstruck that I was like, let me try, because I hit this move at the gym quite often. So let me try this toe hold and hopefully, you know, I, I was like, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> I catch him off guard type of thing. Let's keep going and you tell me when you feel like maybe it started to break down or maybe when you started to feel like you're in trouble here. All right, so right uh, there. Right when, right when he started, I started exposing my back, basically. When I went for that roll, I already thought, ah, oh, here we go. Like, he is known for his barambolos. So. Yeah. So right there, I was like, I was still holding on. I was hoping to, like, really put, you know, some pressure on that foot as as the scramble was happening. But right when I feel like that leg that I was attacking bent, that started to be a hook, basically. That's when I was just like, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, it was a mistake. <laughs> okay, let's keep it going here. I think it kind of slows down for a second. He's just looking to uh, secure his position on you. Are you. You're just looking to defend at this point, eh? I was just like trying my best to survive. He already got his points. Man, he is strong. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> like that, for sure. That ball- was there anything with the uh, with the hand fighting there that was that caught you off guard? Yeah, what happened was um, he already had that forearm under my chin, so it was just a matter of time where he just con- he had he connected his arms basically. Um, so there's one guy that trains there at Toronto BJJ now. He used to train with us, but he moved there for school. Um, so he, over there, as long as you have your forearm across, even across the guy's chin, from what I've experienced rolling with Darson and with this yeah. my old teammate. Right when it goes under the chin, it's just you know it. Uh, once you connect your arms, it's just squeezed from there. It's not. It's none of this. Oh, it's not a clean choke. Yeah. It's not, it wasn't on my neck. It wasn't you know a blood choke. Right. If it's connected, if if they're gonna squeeze, they're gonna squeeze. Okay. Here, let's go forward. As we know, he snaps it on pretty quick. So yeah. I have that that second match lined up here after. So let's just fast forward a little bit, and you can talk about your match with Tony here. So shout out to Tony. Tony's actually whooped my ass in tournaments probably like four or five times. So I just have to say that at the start before we go through this. <laughs> I think you just caught him off guard, man. Yeah. He's 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 really good. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. After the match, I've looked, I've crept through pictures of like guys that I went against, and I saw him at, at the top of the podium a couple of times yeah. against the guys that I that. That beat me. Hey, you probably saw me beside him a few times there. Um, anyways, uh, so let's go back to he's pull guard again. What was the green light to to go for your Kimura there? What tells you okay, I can go? So that that jumping that jumping Kimura trap pass that I that that I did, um, 
that's the pass that I, that's my go-to pass when it comes to Nogi. Because as you know, Nogi now is like it's just so hard to pass since it's so slippery and they can just make space by you know pushing you and then getting their their legs back in. So for me, it was just like once I have the wrist, I just go for it, and then from there, I just hope for the best when it came to the scramble. So I'm here. He go he pulled guard right when I gr right when I grab his wrist. Right when I went for it, like I said, I was hoping to get a scramble out of it because you know I like I like scrambling type of thing. Yeah. So yeah. one of my legs landed between his legs. So right now I'm gonna play it. So as I was looking for the Kimura, he was he was fixated on that on defending the Kimura. Yeah. That he wasn't the feet weren't like it was, he wasn't defending it properly. So as I right when I saw the the foot, what was that the foot that was between my legs? It wasn't protected. Mm -hmm. Then I just went for it, and you just, I just, I just went for it. I just grabbed it, and just like, there's the leg. I'll extend. I'll hold on to it. Well, it's it's good. Like a lot of people talk about how you want to chain your upper and lower body attacks together, and yeah, yeah that rolling Kimura with kind of the inside triangle position there works together so well. I was hoping like not to get stuck. Just be like, go to the back or to the arm. You know, uh, typical rolling Kimura passes like where people land. But I landed into like um, a half guard minus one type of position where one foot, my one leg of mine was between his legs. So that was that. And then I wasn't finishing it correctly. And then one of my one of my friends, one of my former teammates, he he trains at a different gym now, like new gym that opened up because he's helping out type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, he was telling me to. I almost I almost let go of the leg to go for a toe hold, and, I, and then he was just telling me. Um, use your hips like armbar type of thing. Yeah. So that's what ended up happening there. Well, yeah, you look. It's funny. Yeah, it looks like you're flat on your back, and I think there's a point where you get up on your side and really. Yeah, I'm on my side there. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Yeah. From I think I was a little bit behind you there, but um, yeah, dude, nice finish. Yeah. Thanks, man. Dude. I was I was surprised I caught it even just because like. It is the brown belt, black belt division, advanced division, yeah. and the guys that are the, the lineup that I went against, they're they're the top, you know, they're the top mm -hmm. light lightweights in in Canada. So I'm just like, ugh. Yeah, no, they really were, and uh, like that was one of the first um, jujitsu tournaments that I went to film at, and that was like the division that I went for. And I, I ended up missing like the first two matches, anyways, but uh, yeah. but what I did see was was awesome, dude. So. Awesome, man. Uh, appreciate that. Appreciate the little breakdown there. Yeah, no problem, man. Do you want to shout out your team? you have any sponsors or anything you want to shout out? No. No sponsors. Yes, uh, I want to shout out my team, though. Um, shout out Don't Survive Thrive Academy, um, Hands of Gracie, I'm an affiliate in Winnipeg, Professor Daniel Cobb. Um, so, basically, uh, Professor Daniel Cobb is my main professor, but the guy that I learned... Um, that the rolling Kimura trap uh, pass was Professor Mele. Um He's a Serbian guy, so like straight from Serbia, got his black belt here, and like he's basically. So basically, I look at him as like the John Donaher of our gym, okay. and then Professor Daniel Cobb would be like the Hans Gracie of our gym type of thing. Okay. So like, okay. there's the there's the guy with like the nogi that's so into the nogi. I know John Donner knows a lot about gi too, but you know, he likes he I think favors nogi. So Professor Mele is like he's the he's the nogi professor, and then Professor Daniel Cobb is like you know the gi and the head instructor of um, the academy. Uh, yeah, just shout out to those two guys. Those two guys have the biggest influence in my jujitsu. Um, even though they're bigger guys and I'm a smaller guy. You know, they gave me, you know, they taught me little tips and tricks and, you know, just giving where the credit is due, you know. Well, that's it. I mean, if you're a real black belt, you can help out anybody no matter what the size. Exactly. So, so that's yeah. awesome, dude. Good to hear. And I uh, hope you can keep training and I hope we can all just uh, get back to it soon, man. Yeah, man. Me too. All right, dude. I'll, uh, I'll see you around. Thanks again for doing this. Okay.